Hey, everybody, it's JJ Conway. You can find me on the web at KingstownFamilyLifeCenter.org. Also, uh, HandUpsNotHandouts.org.com and KingstownFamilyLifeCenter.org. I am really excited today for many reasons. First of all, it's day three of our 28 days of Black History Month. We're doing 28 things my people need to know about money, and it's been a lot of fun. I've loved all the questions you've been sending me, so keep them coming. Also, it's Saturday. Ooh, let me not shake it around too much. It's Saturday, which is Super Success Saturday because it's the first Saturday of every month, and on the first Saturday of every month, we do a free wealth building meeting at the Pierre Bossier Mall, 9 o'clock. If you can get there, get there. This month's topic is going to be Real Estate Investing 101, basically how to get started in real estate investing even if you don't want to buy the house. The other Saturdays, we walk the mall, and we generally end up talking about wealth building and real estate anyway, so you need to come on out and get your health together and get your wealth together, all right? So now we're going to go ahead and get into day three of our 28 things my people need to know about money, and today we are going to talk about the point called enough. Did you know that there is actually a mathematical point in financial planning called enough? Okay, so the official name is called the crossover point. But I like enough because that makes me feel like I have enough. And, you know, we like to sing more than enough, but you know what? We don't ever feel like we have enough. But mathematically in financial planning, there is a point called enough. Now, I got this chart from an awesome book called Your Money or Your Life. And if you go out to jjconway.org, you can find my list of recommended books for wealth building and other areas of your life. And this is a great book that helps you understand the mechanics behind how money works and how your money is being separated from you and what you can do about it. What this chart is showing you is that if you live on less than what you make, so your expenses, the green line, is less than your income, the blue line, you can invest the rest, which is represented by, these, by this red bracket here, and as you're investing, your investments start to put off money. They make money. And as you invest more and more and more, your investment starts to put out more and more money. And eventually, you come to a point where your investments equal your living expenses. This is the point called enough. This is the point where you have financial freedom, when you have enough in investments that your investments are more than your expenses, your investments are throwing out more money than your expenses, then you don't have to work. You can spend money and uh, you can spend your time on your dreams. You can spend your money on your dreams. You don't have to stress about getting up in the morning if you don't want to. You can follow your passions. You can fulfill your calling. When you have this. Now, notice I'm not saying the money you have in investments is equal to your expenses. What I'm saying is the money that your investments make is throwing out enough to cover your expenses. All right? This is the point that I want us to strive for. And here's the thing before I, before I got into learning about money, I didn't even know there was a point called enough. And that's why most of us aren't striving for enough. Because we didn't know it was possible. Because we've been fed this line that you go through life and you have to get a college loan to succeed, to get a good job, to spend 10 years paying off that loan. And then you have to get car loans because you've got to have a nice ride, a nice reliable ride. You know, I'm, I'm out here by myself. My husband's in another state. I've got these two kids. I need to have reliable transportation and it needs to look good because, you know, look at me, right? Um, so we are fed this line that we, we never can get to a point called enough. But let me tell you something. There are a lot of people out there who know about a point called enough, and they know how to reach it. And that's what I want for you. Okay? We didn't know it was possible, but we do now. So what I want to do right now is I want to step through a couple of examples of what investments are. So the last two days, our day one and our day two, we talked a lot about compound interest. And we talked about what's an investment. So I'm going to show you some examples of investments and how those investments can throw off money. I'm going to use small examples today because these are the kinds of numbers that many of my clients have in their um, savings or their IRAs, and we're trying to grow them to more, okay? So 
Let's say you have $50,000 and you invest it in the stock market. With just that $50,000 at a very conservative 4% uh, calculation, you could take out $2,000 a year and not affect your $50,000. So that's saying, hey, I think the market's going to grow at about, you know, X amount, and if I, if I take 4% of that out every year, I won't eat away at my money. We can talk more about the mechanics of how that works in another talk, but for now, just understand that if you put that 50000 in the stock market, you can expect it to get 2000 out of that every single year for the rest of your life, all right? In 20 years, if you just leave it in there and you don't keep taking out any money, if you, keep, if you just leave it all in there, in 20 years, that 50000 will have grown to 233000 and that 233000 if you just needed money to live off, would put out ten k a year. Now look, I understand very few of us can live off of ten k a year in the United States of America, but that's off of $50,000. Some of you are coming to me with $190,000, 300000 500000 over a million in your IRAs. That money, if you leave it alone, will allow you to retire very well. All right. So this is 50000 In 20 years, it's worth 233 But maybe you don't really like the stock market. Maybe you're like me and you want something you can put your hands on, something you can see, touch, and feel. So instead of putting your 50000 into the stock market, you decide to put your 50000 into a rent home. I'm with you on that. I love real estate, especially for those of us who are a little bit more mature and starting over, or um, those of us who let some sweet-talking man uh, encourage us to liquidate our, um, our uh, investments. Don't do that. Ask me how I know. <laughs> real estate is a great way. It's a great way to rebuild and to invest and build wealth quickly. So, $50,000 into this rent home, this neighborhood, the rents are about 450 a month. So I can expect about uh, 5400 a year from that house. But, of course, you've got to fix things up. You know, things break down. Every once in a while, a renter moves and you have an empty month. So I'm just going to estimate about $4,000 a year that I'm making from my little rent home. Well, now, that's not too shabby after I put in 50000 to get $4,000 where I don't ever have to work for, okay? That's just money that's coming in. Now, granted, you have to manage your tenants, but that's why we're taking out some of that, you know, to compensate us for that or to pay somebody else to do it, all right? In 20 years, that little rent home, using a notional value of real estate uh, um, um, in, um, what do you call it, um, the value of the real estate going up, in about 20 years, that little 50K house will be worth 109K. Plus, over the 20 years, you've collected 108 k in rent, and if you invested all of that, now you would have over $500,000 in value. Isn't that something else? See, nobody tells you about that. And yeah, we may not all be able to save a million dollars, but most of you watching this today, it, it, in, a, in a year or two or three, you could save up 50 Now, let's try another thing because sometimes, you know, we have other things that we want to do with our money and time. And so let's look at another thing. You know, a lot of people talk to me about investing in vehicles and investing in nice things. And, and if you watched my other video from yesterday, you're going to know where this is going. But just, just hang with us for a second, okay? Let's say I decide I'm going to put my $50,000 into a car. This is an actual car that my uh, – she didn't buy this exact picture one, but she bought this – model and year for about $54,000. So that's reasonable. You know, get you a nice little Porsche for $50,000. You can do that. Now, here's the interesting thing about some of these luxury cars. If you go back and look at the value of 20-year-old Porsches, they are worth between 8 to 13 or even less because the maintenance is just so, um, so uh, overbearing on those older vehicles, okay? And let's say you bought this and financed it 6% interest for 72 months. So you've paid 68000 into this car. And in 20 years, it's only worth thirteen. Now, we're just being nice. We're assuming you took good care of it. 
so it's actually worth 13, right? You have still lost $55,000. And that's not including the maintenance costs. Because you know some cars are cheap. Like my car gets a $50 oil change, but I guarantee you this car does not get a $50 oil change. This car probably doesn't get a $50 uh, uh, fluids top off. And this car probably doesn't get a $50 timing belt. I don't know if they use a timing belt or if they use a timing chain or what, but I bet you it's not $50, okay? So you have to choose wisely. And remember, an investment is something that makes you money, not something that costs you money. You're going to lose more money over time on this car than what it actually costs. And even if you paid in full, which is how I prefer to buy cars. I prefer to buy cars paid in full. I prefer my clients to buy cars paid in full because I don't want them to lose money. But even if you did that, you'd still lose 37 k Now, it's okay if you say, well, I know that a, a vehicle is something I'm going to use. I know a vehicle is something I'm going to use. I'm going to use it up and wear it out. It's just a cost of doing business. It's a vehicle. It's a method of transportation. It's not an investment. And it's not saying don't have a nice car because I've got a nice little family car. And I intend to have nicer and nicer cars as these kids get older. That, that baby coming along, it really kind of messed me up on that. I'm a car plan. I'm not getting my Beamer this time. My next car's not going to be what I thought it was going to be because I'm going to have to get another mommy car. Let me get off that rabbit hole and get back into the happy place here. Um, you're gonna, you know, we, 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 we buy these things and we have to understand, hey, that's just a cost of living. But let's make sure that that cost of living is in line with our future goals, okay? This is not an investment. The other two were investments. This one is not. So today, what I want you to, what I want you to take away from today is that, A, there is a point called enough, and I'd like you to make that conscious choice that you are going to reach that point called enough in your life, that you're going to evaluate your, your expenses and strive to lower your expenses beyond what you bring in, and that you're going to invest the rest. And that, you know, this way you will be able to be financially free. That you'll be able to live your dream. You'll be able to leave the legacy that you want to live. All right. That's it for today. Uh, if you have any money questions, please send them to me at ministerwiggins at gmail.com. And if you uh, would like any help coming up with a financial plan, you know you can always find your friendly financial planner at jjconway.org. And um, as well as that link to that book, your money or your life, and a lot of other really great books. You can find that also at jjconway.org. That's all I've got for you today. Y'all take care and be blessed.